Hey sewing friends. So a while back I made this shift dress. It's a very simple shift, shift dress, an A-line dress and I made it out of this lovely viscose crepe from Lady McElroy. And this actually was the very first project in the Taylor Academy sewing courses that I took. And I have to say I really did love or I really do love this dress. I like how it looks on me, I like how I feel in it, and I like how it feels on me when I wear it because I fully lined it with this really great Bemberg lining. So in the summer it's real floaty and, you know, um, very drapey and I really enjoy wearing this dress. And so every time I wear it I would think back of this silk that I had bought from Brightex Fabrics and I never knew what to do with it. But I would think of this and this is a Dolce & Gabbana silk that I had gotten in San Francisco at Brightex Fabric. You know, it's not like a chamoose, it's not a real shiny, slippery, slinky, drapey silk. It's actually very kind of stiff. I don't know if you can tell, you know, that it's sort of stiff. It doesn't have a lot of drape to it. And so it's more of a, is it called chiton? Chiton, silk chiton. Not quite a dupiani because it's not, um, there's no slub in it. But you can feel the texture. So it's not that super silky soft stuff. But I always thought it would look great in that A-line dress. So I went ahead and decided to make it. And I didn't take into account, what I did is I just jumped right into it because I was so excited to finally, you know, use this, this fabric. And it was really fun going back and just taking your time and going back to that first lesson and just doing it step by step. I really enjoyed making the dress so much. But I didn't take into account that this didn't really fit that great on me. You know, when I made it, that was a couple years ago, um, I think I'm a little bit more in tune with what I like in, in, a, in a dress and how I want it to fit. I'm more attuned to you know what to look for and what a good fit and a bad fit isn't. And so really, you know, I should probably raise, it's a little bit big around the arms, so I should raise the arm side. Um, it's a little bit big here at the neck. I think it could probably, or the shoulders rather, I think it could come in some, but it wasn't so bad. And then I thought it was kind of big in the upper chest area. But it wasn't so bad that I wouldn't wear it. In fact, I really didn't notice it until I just really started, you know, getting a more keen eye when I started paying more attention to my clothes and how they're fit and how they're made and yada yada. So I should have made some adjustments and I didn't. So when I made this, I gotta say, the workmanship is spot on. It is excellent. And I gotta tell you, these are, you know, these are the things that I just crack me up about sewing, but I love. This is what I'm this is what I'm proud of too. Look at my little button loop. Okay. I am so proud of that. I think it looks just perfect. You know, it was very fiddly sewing this together. And yeah, and then you know I have my little button here, my turquoise button. Of all the things that I did, this is one of the things that I'm most proud of is my button loop and button. But anyhow. I went ahead and tried it on and I find that it is, you know, kind of like a tent, kind of like an A-line tent. I find it is big around the bust, kind of big here. I don't think it does anything for me. Um, I don't think the color complements me, um, but I see potential there. I do see potential there. I think I can go ahead and take it in a little bit on the sides, get a little bit more shape into it. Um, can't really raise the arm side, but I'm, you know, I, I think it's salvageable because I really enjoyed sewing with this fabric and I really enjoyed making it. And plus, I think it's a gorgeous dress. I mean, it's not necessarily my cup of tea as far as fabric. It's one of those fabrics, you know, have you ever had that? <laughs> You're like, why did I buy this? Well. That's kind of what it was. Why did I buy this? But I thought I'd found the perfect pattern. But anyhow, moving on. So I enjoyed making that so much. And I was so disappointed that I didn't take the time to, to make it fit right. I actually decided to make it again. I think I made that on a Saturday and then I made the other one on a Sunday. Now this one I made out of, again, this is a Visco Chalet. It's a little ditzy print from Lady McElroy, and again, it's lined with a Bemberg lining, 
And here is my absolutely perfect, well, maybe not perfect, but my little button loop that I'm very proud of. And I made this for a couple of reasons. For one, I kind of had in the back of my mind that I wanted a spring outfit ready to wear when the weather turns warm. Because I don't know if this ever happens to you, but you know, you're going about your day, it's kind of still late winter, and then suddenly you start, you, you get a warm spell. And you find yourself, you know, it's a warm day and you're wearing black, or you're wearing a turtleneck, or you're wearing something that you just feel kind of too warm and wintry in, like you're, you're out of place or something. So I wanted to make sure that when the weather turned, bam, I had something new, something nice to wear first couple days of spring. So on this one, I went ahead and did a couple of adjustments. For one, I did raise the arm side. I think I raised it, oh, about a centimeter or half an inch, half a centimeter, I don't know, I'm not sure. I think I raised it about half an inch and then blended it in to the, um, the arm side. And then I did remove just maybe an eighth of an inch or maybe two, a quarter of an inch, I don't think even a quarter of an inch, maybe just an eighth of an inch off the side shoulders so that, that they would be, you know, in more. And then of course I took, I think an inch or an inch, yeah, about an inch off of the center back for a sway back adjustment. And I think the fit on this one is way better for a couple of reasons. One, it's the first one I've made with that sway back adjustment. And I think that that is really important. Um, I do like that I did raise the arm side. I think that this works better, or at least fits better on me when it is made out of something like a viscose or something drapey. I still have high hopes though for that silk. I'm gonna make that fit. I just need to do a little bit of tweaking. But I do like this fit much better. So I thought, okay, this I'm gonna keep in mind for when that beautiful sunny spring day comes, but it is sleeveless and I don't wanna go sleeveless to the office. So I finally, finally decided to make the Sinclair Harper cardigan. Now this is a free pattern and I know a lot of you have probably made it. I know in Sewing Circle, <laughs> all the ladies were like, oh, I've made that, I've made two of them, I've made four of them. Um, it's awesome, it's a free pattern, super easy to make. You can whip that up in an hour, it's so easy. So I had this, let me get the fabric. I think this is a French Terry Modal. So it's definitely a French Terry because you can see kind of the loop back in, on the back inside of the fabric, but it has this really luxury drapey soft um, drape to it. It's And it's thin like this, you know, my hoodie is a French Terry, but it's definitely sweatshirting material. It's much thicker. This is much thinner. It's almost, you know, I think I got it at Style Maker Fabrics and I think they even use the word luxurious in their description. And it is kind of luxurious, I guess, I don't know. But I went ahead and made a long cardigan, the Sinclair long cardigan. Here it is. To go with this dress, to go with the little A-line dress. Let me give you a little look here. So here we go, my cardigan with my dress. I think this will be probably one of my first spring outfits that I wear. I think if I style it right, um, with the right shoes, you know, and maybe some hair and makeup that, well, I know I'll be comfortable in it. Even if it's not the perfect look that I want, I know I'll feel comfortable in it. And I think that's the most important thing, feeling comfortable. I had, I had wanted to make the Harper carpet a cardigan. And actually I wanted to do the Helen's Closet Blackwood. Um, cardigan because I like the idea of a long cardigan but since this pattern was free and it's very similar I decided to go ahead and opt for the Sinclair Harper cardigan and I wanted a long one I've never really worn a long cardigan I know my manager she wears them and she's short like me she's probably an inch shorter than me and she's you know has some a little extra weight on her and she wears like a long um, cardigan sometimes a duster length and so I wanted to give that a try. And I thought that that would be a really good look. Honestly, it's not the best look. I'm thinking maybe I could have done the cropped version to wear with the A-line dress. But again, overall, I will feel comfortable in it and I think I will look presentable and I will feel good. And I think that's the most important thing is how you feel in your clothes. Now you might think, okay, where's this all leading to, Carol? Well, 
what I realized when I made that dress, the apple dress, is that I really want to start using more of the nicer fabrics that I have in my stash. I've been just, you know, I've told you this before, so I'm sorry I sound like a, you know, repeat here, but I've been staying too much in my comfort zone as far as making a lot of t-shirts, a lot of hoodies, you know, um, a lot of knits. It's just really comfortable for me. So I want to branch out and I want to start sewing some of, as I said, some of the nicer wovens that I have up in my stash. And I thought I would start with um, another Sorrento denim jacket. Now I'd made the Sorrento before out of this olive green stretch denim. I don't know if you can see the stretch in it, but it has about 2% stretch. And surprisingly enough, I wear this all the time. I love this jacket. And one of the things I like about it is the way it's designed because it does have a lot of the regular denim features. Like for instance, you have your pocket and it's a real pocket. It's not just a flap. I don't know if you can see, but it has, you know, these, these pieces here in the front. So there's a lot of little pieces to it, even in the back. You have a side piece here, and then your back piece. And then of course you have this on the band around the back. I think it really, really is very, very much a, a denim jacket pattern. The, I guess if I were to criticize it, I don't like that it's stretched. I think it's a little bit big. It's a little bit big off the shoulders, but that's okay, it's a jacket. And then it's a little bit short, it's a little bit cropped. And I have found that the sew over it sloper their their um what do you call it kind of their block is a little short everything i have to lower to the waist so i want to make it again and it's not a difficult sew but it is involved because there's lots of little pieces there's top stitching again i want and i want to line it i would actually gotten the idea to line it from Sean at Kittenish Behavior, and she did make a good point. When you put your arms in it, you want some, you know, you want them to just slide in. So I'm thinking of lining it as well. And I know when I start a project that it's a little out of my comfort zone, that I might have questions, I always find it easier if I'm doing it with someone. So for instance, when we made the Kindle, um, Kim, what, the, the Cashmere Kimball Bomber jacket, we did a little group, there were three of us, and we'd meet each week um, on Zoom, and we'd talk about what, you know, what we were doing, the obstacles we came across, you know, how we solved it, and it was really a lot of fun. So I'm gonna start a denim jacket group, if you wanna make a denim jacket, and let me tell you, I think everybody has in their stash a denim jacket pattern that they either have never made, or they haven't made it for a while, um, so if you're, if you're up for it, let's start a group where we can meet once a week with Zoom, talk about our progress, our fitting, you know, and it doesn't have to be the Sorrento jacket. It can be any pattern that you want. And it doesn't necessarily have to be denim. It can be corduroy or, you know, cotton. I'm thinking of starting this project on either Friday, um, April 26th or Saturday, April 27th. So if you want to make a denim jacket and you want to be a part of the group and we can all, as I said, meet once a week on Zoom and share how our progress is and, and what we're doing, go ahead and send me an email to thepolysews22 at gmail.com. And when you send an email, let me know what days work best for you to meet once a week. And I'm thinking probably three, four times is really all we need to get the whole project done. So let me know if a Saturday or a Friday works better for you and what time of day works best because I can I don't work Friday so I can do Friday morning but I know a lot of people work so we might you know be able to do Friday evening or maybe Fridays are just too busy for you and you want to do Saturday. But let me know your date and time that works for you and then let me know what time zone you're in because obviously if you're on the East Coast or if you're you know in Great Britain or Australia or someplace else, you know <laughs> You know, 10 a.m. is it can, can be very fluid depending on where you are in the world. Um, yeah, and then we'll go ahead and get organized and get started on making our denim jacket, or at least I'm going to make my Sorrento jacket. And also, if you're not interested in making a jacket but you would like to be a part of the sewing circle, we have been having a lot of fun. I tell you, these are just a great bunch of ladies. We talk about what we're making, we show each other what we're working on, the fabrics, the patterns we're buying, and just general chit chat. Now our sewing circle meets every Saturday at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.
So yeah, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you'd like to be a part of the sewing circle, again, just send an email to polysews22 at gmail.com. I will then send you a link and you can log on and just enjoy sewing chat with a really, truly great bunch of ladies. So that's what's been going on in my sewing room lately. I will go ahead and see you next time, guys. Bye.